Hey YouTube, it is your girl here, Tammy C. Walker, the owner of Dreams Are Reality. I created this channel to provide light and love. I decided that I needed to reach out and ask people what type of videos would help. I do this here and there, but I got to do it a little better. And a dear friend who happens to be a project manager said, time management. She was telling me that people really uh, need help, you know, managing their time. And she gave me such a good compliment. She said, I'm um, really good about, you know, maintaining my two jobs and keeping up with my YouTube channel. You know, you, you're just going through the motions, not thinking. But I guess she had a point. So it's time for me to share some of my tips with you all. So without further ado, Let's get it. All righty. I got a little presentation today because I couldn't really verbalize it without kind of breaking it down for you. All right. So time management hacks. Of course, I'm Tammy C. Walker and my channel is Dreams Are Reality, um, my life coaching business, so on and so forth. All righty. So time management is the process of directing how much time is spent on certain activities. It could be um, from raising your family, from being at work, from running your business, from your schoolwork, um, keeping taking care of your self-care, your chores, paying your bills. All of that is part of your time management. Now, things that I do to conduct my daily duties, I work two jobs and I have several hobbies. Just to give, give you a little backdrop on me, for those of you that uh, don't really know that much about me, I am a licensed social worker. I work as a counselor full-time at a grammar school with sixth, seventh, eighth graders, young girls. Um, our program is called WOW, Working on Womanhood. I work for a company called Youth Guidance. We are in quite a few um, schools in the Chicagoland area. I would say more underperforming uh, schools, and some are not. But the top tier schools, we're not really there. But we're in some good schools. Um, our goal, especially with WOW, is to encourage our young girls that, you know, they are special. They have value. And we talk about body image, healthy relationships. We take them on trips. We expose them to yoga. Uh, I did a paint party with uh, my young ladies last year and took them to a paint place where they were able to paint. I've taken kids to the Bears training camp. Um, Michelle Obama sat in our circle. She's part of the WOW group in Hyde Park um, in Chicago on the south side. So it's a big darn deal. And we, of course, we have Bam becoming a man for our boys. That Bam was first and WOW came second. Uh, Bam is an older program, but we service a lot of youth throughout the Chicagoland area. And we've spread it to um, Los Angeles, Kansas City, Missouri. Is it Kansas, Kansas City? Kansas. Um, Dallas. I think we're going to open in Tampa. We have also went international. So I don't want to spend all day talking about my job. Okay. Also, I work part-time as a therapist four days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday evening, Saturday. I do about five clients per Saturday. I just bought a new guitar. I had a guitar from 2004. I gave it to my niece. I bought me a brand new one, same guitar, Yamaha. So I've been working on that a few times a week. Just give me a rundown of my week. Um, maintaining my health is part of my week, like taking my vitamins, doing my juices, making sure I meditate, journal, maintaining my household chores. Um, I live alone. So if it don't get vacuumed by me, it's not going to get done. I have to mop. I have to wash. I have to throw my dishes in the dishwasher, wash dishes, um, pay bills. You all know, you all know what goes on in the home. I have to find balance with my family and friends. My social life is a big part of my life. I also need quiet time for myself, especially being a counselor and a therapist. I'm giving out a lot of energy. One of my big weekly duties is to maintain my YouTube channel. I have a nice Twitter following. Um, my you know, Instagram is just okay, as well as Facebook. But Twitter is a big following, bigger following. And YouTube is starting to really get some traction. So 
I have to really stay mindful of all of these things. Now, let's just think about it. Poor time management, this creates stress and headaches. You can also, like in my, let me just give you my life. If I have poor time management, I'm going to be late for work, which that would throw my students off because they're going to be looking for me for groups. And then if I'm late seeing my clients, it's going to throw off the next client. It just becomes a vicious cycle. If I have poor time management, I won't get to clean my place. And I do not like a dirty place because it causes me anxiety. So I have to keep my home clean. Doesn't have to be eat off the floor clean, but everything kind of in place, you know, where it's not sloppy. I really appreciate the time with my family and my friends. If I have poor time management, I will start canceling family events or, you know, uh, lunches and breakfasts and dinners with my friends. And that's important to me. You don't want to miss doctor appointments and dental appointments because those appointments are scarce. Whenever I call to make an appointment with my doctor, it's always two to three months out. Um, and that's not, you know, always good. So make sure, you know, you get those doctor appointments and the dental appointments and keep them. Poor time management means you're going to be late for your appointment, which if you're too late, they're not going to see you. So it's important to make these appointments. Um, poor time management would mean me wasting time on social media, just surfing around aimlessly on Facebook without any, you know, reason. <laughs> it's okay to, to um, you know, check out your friends and family and respond. I enjoy doing that, but I can't do it all day. I won't be able to tend to my students or my clients. I'll be thrown off my schedule. I don't want to miss paying bills because that creates late fees. And Lord knows I don't want it ding showing up on your credit. It just dings your score some terrible. And it causes your finances to become, oh, I misspelled finance, so finances, sorry, you all, to um, become out of whack. And then when you're out of balance mentally, you're just going to be just, you know, it's just high stress. So that was my rundown. But what about you? Like getting to work, are you late every day? That causes stress. I've been like that where I'm, you know, a few minutes behind and you kind of start your day off in a frenzy or, um, you know, I'm sure if you have kids out there, you really want to have those kids on the schedule. You want to have them in bed at a good time. You want to feed them at a good time, make sure their homework is done. And, you know, shout out to the moms and dads. I, I live, you know, alone. I don't have kids so I can get things done. But I know being a parent, it has a big layer of, of responsibility and some of your things don't get done because you have to have a routine with kids. You can tell when kids don't have a routine, they're all over the place. And believe it or not, it carries over to their adulthood. If your kids are just all over the place, sometimes they may be sloppy with work. They may get to work late. They don't appreciate being on time, being punctual. So if you have kids, I would recommend putting them on the schedule, especially especially Monday through Friday, because it helps them as they enter into adulthood and young, you know, young teenage years. All righty, I know you're probably familiar with the SMART goals. That that is goals that are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time oriented. I'll talk more about that in the next slide. And um, just prioritize wisely. It could be a, based on a deadline. You might have other people you're working with. And this will impact your work. So let me just read what it said. It could be based on, dead, on deadline available members to work or its calculated impact. So when you don't prioritize, it definitely throws things off. More about the SMART goals. So you want to make sure your goal is specific. Okay, let's just say you want to get a master's degree by 2026. Be specific. I want to get a master's degree from Dominican University in social work by May 2026. Is this goal measurable? Yes, it is. Define what evidence will prove you're making progress and reevaluate when necessary. I'm going to measure this goal because I know I need to take 20 classes to get my master's. If I'm going to do it in May, have it done by May 2026, 
I know for this, this semester that's ready to start January through May, I probably should have two to three classes scheduled already. That way I can measure the progress. And then by the summer, I'll have some more classes done. Then by December 2023, I'll have even more classes done. So hopefully by the end of the year, I can measure and say, hey, I took eight classes for the year. I am well on my way to getting my master's degree. Is it attainable? I think it's very attainable. If you want to get your degree by May 2026, it's a master's. Usually it takes three years. You write on target. Make sure you can reasonably accomplish your goal within a certain time frame. Now, it's no cakewalk, you know, especially if you're a wife or husband, you have the kids, you have to focus with going to school. Make sure you have a good support system. Committing to school for two and three years is a big order, tall order. So make sure you're able to stick with it. Many people do stuff online now. So that's the beautiful thing. Now, online doesn't mean easy because those teachers really lay it on thick. Is it relevant? Your goals should align with your values and long-term objectives. Of course it's relevant. I want to be a social worker. So I need that master's degree to get to my end goal. Time-based. So make sure you set a realistic, ambitious end date for task prioritization and motivation. Do not say, I'm going to get my master's degree in a year. That's not realistic. You want to make sure it's time-based and make sure it makes sense. Make sure that you can reach it. All right, you create a timeline for each task and stick to it. Now, I do it, okay, so I do want to show you all. I know, I know it's, it got me in a little bitty circle, but... Um, Ooh, I could even, I don't even know how much you all could see because the circle is kind of little. But this is my planner I bought off Amazon. I had a similar one for 2022. I like this one better. It's more like a leather kind of bound. It has um, each day, but it has the whole month. And I just like how it's um, laid out. This is very good. I swear by this. So today, I did not have much in here because I am off on Wednesdays and I'm off from my school until Monday. So I didn't have much because I know this is the day that I tried to take care of myself. Even if I had to work Wednesday evenings, I don't see clients overall. I, I do slide one in here and there, but I try not to. Tomorrow is free. I have another vacation day. And then at five o'clock, I have my own therapy appointment. I have a client at six and a client at seven. This keeps me on track. Friday is a vacation day. I'm going to visit a dear friend who bought a beautiful home and I get to see it and see her, of course. So I write all of that down. I'm going to a Bulls game in February. It's in there. I'm getting a facial. It's in there. I have to see my kids at school and do groups. It's in my book. I have a doctor appointment in February. It is in there. Um, I put bills that I need to pay in there. Um, I just put, I drop everything in there. That way I am on top of my life. I also use my Google calendar, which chimes on my phone. For work, I have Outlook, my main job. And for my second job, we use therapy notes and I have a calendar on there. So I'm like, tr I'm really working off of four calendar. Sounds nuts, but it really keeps me on target. I really use my cell phone a lot to maintain order throughout my day. So you iPhone users out there, you Android users, I'm Android, don't be laughing, do not laugh. Use those tools. Um, technology is so advanced that we should not be out of order. Um, some people be like, I can't remember to um, get up early. I can't remember to do this. I can't remember to do that. I tell them, use your phone even like when my clients have to see me my, my older clients know but the younger ones kind of you know it could be a little bit lazy and i'm like you know you made an appointment with me for five o'clock it should be in your phone i try to train my younger clients to be responsible because you're going to be in college and these professors are not going to be holding your hand so create a timeline for each task and stick to it so 
Work on the most important things first. I start my mornings with journaling, meditating, positive reading. I say the same thing since, you know, some of you have been following me for a while, but I try to do this most mornings. It puts me in a really good mood. And people can tell, they're like, you're always positive. You know, what is your secret? But like my friend told me today, and, and we were talking on text, it's discipline. When you have discipline, you can conquer the world. This is how athletes, they score 71 points. So Donovan Mitchell, always against my bulls. But Donovan trains well, I'm pretty sure. Um, uh, DeMar DeRozan, he talks about his summer training. Many don't train hard like him because he puts himself through a rigorous summer. Discipline will get you far. Um, you know, that's why I kind of talk about people with the whole marijuana and gummies and drinking a lot. I'm not doing that to judge. You can do whatever you want. But you want to have a clear mind where you can achieve goals. Um, you know, if I was a marijuana smoker personally or gummy taker, I would kind of do it in the evening time, maybe to unwind, but I wouldn't want to do it during the day. I know it helps you with your anxiety and all that. I'm not picking on you, but you just want to get some discipline where you can get shit done. Excuse my mouth, but you do. And if that helps you, it's, it's okay because I know it does help some people with fibromyalgia and other anxiety, you know, with anxiety. So whatever, we're going to get off of that. Um, also, I get prepared for work and I have to commute to work because I do not live in Chicago, but I have to work in Chicago. Um, early evening, I may take a nap, but I'm kind of getting away from that because I become disoriented. And if I have to wake up at 530 and I have a client at six, sometimes I'm a little weird for a few minutes. So I'm really not really needing to do the naps um, anymore. I hope it stays like that. So three evenings a week, I have therapy clients, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and um, I have my own therapy um, tomorrow. I also have a meeting for my second job every other week. Late evenings, I love watching the Bulls, which is something I just did. However, while I was watching the Bulls, I told, I promise you all I would pull out my um, trampoline, my rebounder. I did 28 minutes, I do believe, jumping up and down on my rebounder. So I was able to exercise as well as watch the bulls. So I felt like I killed two birds with one stone. In the evenings, I love to relax. I love to do laundry. Sometimes I'll run my dishwasher. I talk on the phone if I have some time or I'll do YouTube videos, which is what I'm doing tonight. Oh, I already put that on there. Huh? YouTube videos. I may create some videos in the evenings. I may create some evenings and on the weekend, I record my podcast. I'll do that early in the morning with my earbuds. Um, I do a lot of recordings, but I scratch a lot of them. I don't even put them out. Sometimes it's more of a ramble and some come off a little negative or judgy real bad. So I don't put those out, but it's still kind of therapeutic to get those words out of my head. But I usually publish the ones I really feel like God is like telling me to do that or I feel in touch to do that. But anyhow, that's um, these are things that are very important to me. Do those first. Whatever is important to you, work on them first. It means setting boundaries and telling people, no, I have to get this done. I have to get that done. I feel that some people are not getting things done because they don't have discipline and they do not have boundaries. You have to tell people no to get to your yes. So the tools that help me again is my planner, like I just showed you. I swear by it. This is probably my fifth or sixth planner. I've been having planners since I was in grad school and before that. I used to have the Franklin Covey. You all remember, remember that? Um, Google Calendar. If you're on Android, I'm pretty, I guess, yeah, and you can do that with iPhone. Use your Google, Google Calendar. It'll pop up on your phone. Like I said, these are tools that help me. I use Outlook for work. I have to. I use Therapy Notes, the calendar for my second job. My bills. I've been reading the book, Budgetista. I put all, every, all my debt on a spreadsheet and I highlight things as I pay. So I know how much I owe, what, are, what is the finance charge or the rate, and that's holding me accountable. I use my notebook daily. I don't think I wrote too much in my notebook today, but every day, basically, I'm journaling my thoughts. 
I do goal setting. I may write the same goals over and over. I'll do um, kind of law of attraction phrases, things that I want to manifest. I'll do a lot of manifesting in my notebook, regular notebook from Target that costs a dollar ninety nine. Um, exercise. Um, I didn't mean exercise on this. I meant exercise your evenings and mornings. Do your stuff in the morning. If you get up early, do some things. Do your journey. Do your meditation. If you're too early, like sometimes I may have a little bit of insomnia, I go mop my floor if I know it needs doing. One less thing I have to do in the evening. And like I said, I do my YouTube videos um, typically in the evening. Sometimes in the morning if I have a remote day. Um, But yeah, I do a lot. I'm more of a night owl. Although I have been falling asleep earlier, it seems like the nighttime is coming back where I'm able to get more done. I've been using my treadmill, but again, today I just added the rebounder back in so I won't get bored doing that. But I think the tools that really help me are also maintaining balance by not wasting much time. Like today, I really didn't get on Facebook. I am going to get on there briefly and wish a dear friend happy birthday, but I don't have a lot of time to play around on there today, nor do I want to, because I want to get this video out. I booked me a massage. These are tools that help me. I booked me a facial in in a couple of weeks. I love getting pedicures, although I haven't been doing them due to the winter. I've been doing my own feet. I have my own pedicure um, tub. And time off is imperative, like I'm off today. And, oh, I just been misspelling words. I'm sorry, you all. I do not spell. I was typing fast. And vacation is very important. I would like to hit Nashville again this year. I would like to go to California and see my, my god sis. Um, and, and whatever other trips are going to pop up, I'm open. It could be like three-day week, three-day, you know, the three-day weekend trips. Those are awesome. Meditation, journaling, prayer, juicing, and positive reading all help me. They are all my tools as well as taking vitamins. So when you do do your task, let's be fully engaged with the tasks that are in front of you. Stay present when you are at lunch, dinner, and with family and friends. I remember years ago, many years ago, when Facebook first came out, a very dear friend, she stayed on Facebook while we were at dinner. I became enraged. Now, if it had have been 2023 20, Tammy, I would have said, I'll be right, 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 right back and went to the washroom and went in, and no, I would have went to my car. I left her sitting there with her phone because I thought that was so rude. And you see these couples at dinner and their heads down, they on the phone. And me and my, me and my guy, my ex guy, we used to always be out at dinner. We never pulled out our phone because we liked to, he, he wasn't a big talker though. He'd just be eating it quiet and I'll be talking. But um, I just thought that was so rude to be on your phone. And your husband or your wife sitting there, your girlfriend, and you, and even a friend or your mom. Be engaged with your family. I'm not saying you got to be perfect, but come on. If you out for dinner with your peeps, with your girl, with your guy, with the love of your life, whomever, spend that time engaged. It may be your last dinner with people. You don't, we don't know. Stay present, stay in the moment. If you're at your kids' game, don't be tagged in. Or have you seen people at the movie theater? They're on the phone texting at the movies. Stay engaged with the task. If you're at your kid's recital, stay engaged. If you're having a conversation with your little son or your daughter, your teen, they need to know that you're really listening and get them to listen to you. Stay present for yourself when you're reading and during your self-care. If you're having a meditation or sometimes when I get my lashes done, I just take in the moment. Take in the moment. If you're on the phone with a good friend, Listen to your friend. Don't go jumping on Facebook, which I do do that a little bit. But sometimes we'll be talking about stuff. We'll both of us be pulling stuff up. One of my friends, we may do that a little. But try not to do that too much because you can get thrown off. And your friend can tell, like, they're not even listening to me. It, it kind of comes off rude. It really does. Stay present. If you're in a relationship, and boy, do I have a video to talk about that one. Stop not being engaged with your your person. So um, I'm not going down the rabbit hole. But if you are in a relationship, you need to be engaged and present. Don't just say I'm married or we're dating and you're on your Xbox, not paying them attention. Or, you know, the wife is in her own world and the husband's talking to the boyfriend. It don't matter. Relationship, marriage, long term, don't matter. 
If you want to be in a relationship, show up and show out in a good way. Stay engaged with the task in front of you. And hey, the relationship is your task. You signed up for it. If you are in a profession where you have meetings, you're a hairstylist, um, you do catering events, you're a therapist like me, a teacher, a professor, a life coach, a doctor, lawyer, dentist, be on time for your appointments. Now, you know medical, the medical field, those doctors and dentists, one bad root canal or, you know, somebody's having a baby or they have a medical emergency, that can be very, you know, choppy. That is not on those doctors, but they do, they still have to try to keep their schedule within reason, but emergencies happen. We're not talking about that. Be on time as a therapist. If my client is at uh, tomorrow, six o'clock, if I show up at 610, my client going to be looking at me sideways. That's tacky. Um, if I am going to be late, which Lord knows, I sure try not to be. I'm serious. I do try not to be. I'm going to text them and email them right away because they know that I'm pretty timely. And, and it's been, I think it's happened maybe a couple of times, especially that's why I don't like to be at home because sometimes remote is not good. I have taken a nap and overslept and my clients are freaking out. Like, are you okay? Because they know I never miss, but it's like, I slept basically through the alarm. That's how tired I was. Be on time for your appointments. Be on time. It it um, doesn't look good when you're late all the time. Be on time for meetings. Be on time. Being late, it creates stress. And it causes you to lose credibility with people. Even if you are the top nail technician, you are the top hairstylist, you are the bum.com life coach, you are the bum therapist. If you're always late, people, it, 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 you know, you lose credibility. They look at you funny and it kind of takes away from their experience. So work on that. Work on being on time. Don't sweat the small stuff. Sometimes things don't go as planned. Try not to panic. People cancel. Lord knows they be canceling on me. People get sick. Sometimes I get sick. I just told you I've overslept a couple of times. People miss the mark and... I missed the mark. We missed the mark. Go back at it again the next day, when and where you can. But don't sweat the small stuff. Um, I think something that would kind of freak me out is this is where that Virgo perfectionist stuff comes in. I'm If I'm getting married and I have this plan for my wedding and that plan planned and something falls apart, I think, um, I think that'll really freak me out because I really like my stuff very orderly and nice, especially if I'm having my name on it and I'm having guests. I'm all about, you know, really doing something with elegance and class. So I always think about that when I get married again. I'm like, ooh, me. I know that's going to be quite the day. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you do want your stuff to go nice. You spend a lot of money. But sometimes we can't sweat the small stuff. Part of your time management is learning to say no to people and projects that do not align with your goals. No, I won't be able to do that. Nope. And I am the no queen. I do not say yes to things I don't want to do. And you'll see if you're in your 20s, by the time you hit 35, 40, 50, 60, 70, you'll be like, nope, nope, I don't want to do that. No, I won't be able to do that. No, no. No, 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 no. I said, no, it's going to be a song. No, no, no. You don't jack your body to that. And it's, it's, it's okay. You know, uh, don't do it just to be doing it, but do it when you know it does not align with your goals. It does not serve you well. You don't feel good doing it. It's okay to say, no, I know I won't be able to do that. No, no, thank you. Oh, well, they're going to be mad anyway, but you won't be. Productivity is never an accident. It is always the result of a commitment to excellence, intelligent planning, and focus effort. Oh, sorry. That was by Paul J. Meyer. So um, when you grow your YouTube channel, I have friends. I mean, I'm just blown away by them on here. Their channel has taken off. That's because their productivity was never an accident. They stuck with it. They were committed to excellence. And their planning effort and their focus effort was on point. So if you have a goal, you got to be disciplined. And it's not an accident to get to that end goal. But it takes discipline and you have to be 
on point so you can have productivity. All righty now, everybody. Thank you for watching. Drop me some comments. What do you use for time management? Please subscribe to my channel. Please hit that like button. Share this with somebody because we want to be on point for 2023 with our time management. This is going to help your YouTube channel grow. This is going to get you to your bachelor's degree, your master's degree, your GED, your high school diploma. It's going to get you to um, do better with your relationships, planning your date nights, um, getting your kids on point with their schedule for school, you know, um, maybe getting them to help you with chores, time management. That's the key to keeping your house clean, to paying your bills on time. All of this goes together. Think about growing up. Think about your parents watching them. Wasn't well, I bet they was on point because mine were with going to work and, and getting stuff done. That's one thing I loved about the 70s and 80s, watching my parents get stuff done. And um, I hope you had the same experience. And if you're a little younger, I bet your parents still was getting stuff done. All righty, Tammy Sharice Walker, the owner of this great channel, Dreams Are Reality. Thank you all for watching. God bless you all. God keep you all. And have a beautiful rest of your day. Manage that time now. Manage that time. Bye-bye. <laughs>